So about a month ago, we recorded a podcast with fully charged recruitment where we met David Hunt and Stephen Robinson. And we talked about how we need to recruit loads of more engineers and scientists to work in the tech sector. And uh, I just want to see how things have been going. So I'm going to go and have a quick catch up with them. So guys, it's really good to see you again uh, in slightly, I think, more salubrious circumstances <laughs> than my kitchen. It's very, very pleasant to hear. But I'm just intrigued now because the original recording we've made has gone out and I have no idea what the response has been. I've heard, I've had seen tweets about it to me saying this is a really good idea. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I've got someone who really would, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I don't, you must have got direct feedback, have you? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, personally, lots of candidates that we've already recruited through the Hyperion business and clients that we're already working with through the Hyperion business have, have, have came really excited, big fans of the Fully Charged show, right. know what we do, we're in our space, share the same passion and desire and have, have, have literally been, let us know when you're live and, and how we can support you. So it's been massive. I don't yeah. know if you've had the same. Well, candidate side as well, I think within, because we only had a holding page up, the web li website yeah. in our life, but we had a holding page up and within 24 hours, they're like about a thousand plus subscribers. So wow. Oh, people, that, so that, which is fantastic. Yeah. Because I mean, even since we've met, <laughs> I think it's fair to say the world has shifted a little bit. It, and I mean, bizarrely, you know, it's, we don't need to talk about the actual appalling stuff that's going on at the moment, but the, the shift in consciousness about our energy needs and supplies and you know everyone has suddenly become aware that this is a really big issue and therefore the, the field that you're talking about employing people in yeah. I can't see it doing anything other than expanding at exponential rate I mean it's going to be an enormous shift of focus of the country's energy I think yeah I think it's been phenomenal since um, the stuff that's going on at the moment I mean we've had this for, for ages people you know, assume that people want to move always for money yeah, and that's just not the case. I mean, it's a factor, of course, for everybody. We've got to pay the bills. Yeah, and there are some people are more money motivated than others. But people that come to us have always said it's about the sector, it's about doing something meaningful with my right. career, it's about doing something useful with my time. Yeah, and that's only escalating, and that's one of the reasons we created fully charged, of course, to help more people on that journey. Yeah. So, I mean, is that what? I mean, where do you think the biggest? Is there a biggest sector that you you would be? recruiting for or is it is it pretty broad it's it's, it's pretty broad but there's there's sort of i'd say four core subsectors within the the, the the clean tech or the clean energy umbrella uh for us uh the biggest one is say future mobility but becoming yeah. more and more present mobility so um you know the connected autonomous shared electrified space and fuel cells as well and um, for us and everything that plugs into that so the infrastructure piece right. um you know making sure that the infrastructure is rolled out at scale so People can charge the cars. You know, David and I, we're fortunate. We've got a driveway. We've got a, a charger that we can charge whilst we sleep. Nice yeah. and convenient. But there's others, friends of mine in London, for example, who don't have that luxury. They need and rely on the, the charging network that's on the street. So working with the, you know, the charge point operators to, to build their teams is going to be huge for us across multi-disciplines. Um, working with the vehicle manufacturers as well. Right. Um, actually putting the vehicles on the ground because that's one of the biggest barriers right now, affordable EVs for the masses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then on the energy storage side as well, chemistries, um, you know, the different durations to power the grids, make workplaces, homes even smarter, cleaner and greener. And there's a whole smart cities piece, smart cities, buildings and homes. There's right. so much, which again, obviously a big focus increasingly with, with the Fully Charged Show, of course, is around you know, homes and consumption, how to make your house more efficient. And all of those technologies uh, are, are clients that we work with or people that want to sort of have an affinity for those sorts of technologies, helping those into those careers. Right. And of course, I'm an old solar dude from many years ago, yeah. so absolutely we'll be focused on solar and, and renewable technologies right. as well. Because that's what I mean. I had a, a couple of interesting conversations since we last met. Where, where one on a podcast, which was with a, a charging, a, a rapid charger company. Doesn't matter which one. And what they, what was really, really st struck with me was, you know, they've got the, all the problems with getting uh, grid access, with getting, uh, you know, locations to put their charges yeah. in, and and enough supply to support them, and blah blah blah. But he said the one thing we have no problem with is money. 
there, he said there's this vast amount of money that is waiting to be invested in these areas, which is really interesting. And he said the problem, it, it, wasn't, just the, it wasn't just the locations, it was the equipment, yep. the, the, the part shortages. It's building the equipment fast enough, he said. But the one thing we know we could do is pay for everything. We've not yeah, got yeah. a problem raising the money. That's in, in, in a, what he was saying. He's holding back the money because, look, we can't do it yet. Don't yeah. give us the money yet. <laughs> give us it next year when we can... When we've got access to the grid, the the parts, you know. But there's, I just feel there's this kind of real tidal wave of employment demand yeah, yeah. that we've got ahead of us. I wrote, I wrote a blog a couple of years ago about uh, never mind the lithium, where's the talent, and yes. about that same thing. You know, the, yes. there are of course some shortages of, of equipment at the moment with with chips in particular and stuff. But generally speaking, money's abundant. The, yeah. the, the technology exists. But yeah. Who's going to install this stuff? Yeah. Who's going to project manage? Who's going to physically install? Who's going to lead the teams that are doing that? And that's clearly the sort of where we come into the equation. We've built teams for already under the sort of Hyperion banner for a multitude of companies who've sort of come in and we've recruited project managers, bid managers, uh, installations managers, operations, right. sales, business development, the whole team that we're able to go and then deploy in a few instances this kind of off street parking solution. Right. Because I suppose that's it's my limited thinking. I'm thinking that there'll be like a plumbing company with three employees and they'll come to you because they need another plumber. That's not really... I mean, what you're doing is like a big company that wants to employ a big team. I mean, is that... Or, I mean, I suppose you, you cover every aspect. Yeah, but. I mean, we do work with an awful lot of startups that are scaling mm -hmm. when they've got money. But equally, right. obviously, there are a number of larger organizations who are looking to move or trans, you know, sort of transition their offering more yeah. into mm -hmm. this way, particularly for EV charging infrastructure, for example. So... Uh, recently working with Liberty Global, which is part of a massive uh, yeah. group, um, yeah. but having a shift into the EV charging infrastructure network. And right. Steve has already sort of recruited a number of people for that team. Yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's you know, huge telecoms companies or, or, you know, parking terminal manufacturers that are now trying to bridge the gap between smart parking and paying for EV right. charging, right. who are now trying to almost diversify their business and build brand new EV teams. And yeah. the biggest issue, as you said before, you know, investment is there's no shortage of it, so, it, it that it's, somehow sounds crazy to me but that's amazing yeah, yeah a couple of years ago maybe that was the biggest issue for some of the startups that we work with getting through the you know the the bootstrapping phase of, yeah. of of having enough cash in the bank to bring in the right people doesn't seem that's the issue no more it's it's finding the right people that want to be part of the same journey right. and i think that's quite inspiring for people who are looking to get into the sector that perhaps have always thought well is this you know are we at the tipping point you know if you're not inside the bubble as we yeah. are you don't always know exactly where where things are and i think again things that you look at i think last year the eu and had 11 billion invested in purely clean tech startups right 11 billion euros yeah that's not a shortage of cash no that's quite a big <laughs> that's investment definitely not a shortage of cash so yeah. it's it's a case of again i think a reassurance for people to actually my future is best served, A, because I'm going to enjoy it more, I'm going to do something more impactful, but B, there's actually longevity in those careers now. Right. I mean, do you see in the, in the longer term there is a, a genuine skill shortage in this country, or do you think there actually are enough people that are skilled enough but they may be working in other sectors at the moment? Is that, how does that pan out? Kind of a bit of both, would you say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are issues with um, training uh, yeah. and working with organisations and government organisations to get people from school level. But actually, in terms of an immediate need, there are an awful lot of people that have fantastic skills right. uh, that they've honed in telecoms, IT, oil and gas, traditional yeah. automotive, all these places. Um, and we just need to make sure that uh, as a sector, the clean tech sector is welcoming and, and accepts those transferable skills. And increasingly, they do. And they're keen, we're keen to play a part in that. Um, but yeah, there, there are definitely many people who would love to be in the sector who are skilled enough for it right but in the longer term there is i think a, a shortage coming down yeah pipe. yeah because i mean that was a, an, um, i mentioned it to you earlier but a, an interesting conversation i've just had <coughs> with a company that tr that you know facilitates training engineers for manufacturing and for all the things that we're talking about mm -hmm. and they they have they said that they've seen an uptick recently of young people so this is school leavers Going, I don't. Maybe I don't want to go to university, but I'd really love to train up to really quite a high level of, of skills, which is what they facilitate. Yeah. But that was quite encouraging. And when they heard, I said, "Oh, you know, we do this thing called fully charged recruitment." But you know, you put, "Oh my God!" You know, they were really, really interested in, in, in that. So the other difference between when we last spoke is the web page is now live, so people can find that, and that's presumably where there's a lot of information. I'm assuming. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. Uh, www.fullychargedrecruitment.com. Uh, as a as a candidate who's looking to elevate your career, if you're already working within the clean tech world or 
whether it's something you want to get your foot into as a brand new candidate working in other industries on there you can you know look at the typical clients that we're working with um, you can access blogs and career advice as david mentioned before um, equally as a, as a as a client who's looking to to, to, to build and, and right. scale your team you can look at the sectors where our specialism sits uh, as we mentioned before across ev future connected autonomous share mobility energy storage and um, the lithium iron battery space etc uh, and the clean tech world we have an abundant experience there so you can find out deeply about how we can help you build and scale yeah. those those teams um the social media platforms and channels are live right. as well across yeah. across twitter and instagram at fully charged rec yeah it's taking a lot of time to make sure the website is very um intuitive very detailed but very clean and intuitive so people can go there very easily find the access to information they want whether they're a, a portfolio uh, company within a vc whether they're a candidate wanting to get into the marketplace or whether they just want to see what's going on in the world of work in clean tech Right. Uh, and we'll be at the upcoming Fully Charged Live that's shows as well. Fully Charged Live. So that's great. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be at the, the Farnborough show, which yeah. is fantastic. But then, because oh, that's a, a point that we should remember, is that you're also going to be in Europe. So you're coming to the Amsterdam show, yep. which is yeah. amazing, in May. Yeah, with that, yeah book uh, flights yeah. last night. So oh, uh, looking, forward, looking forward <laughs> God, to I that I haven't one. done that yet. <laughs> yeah. I'll be cycling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that is very exciting then. So that, that you, I mean, you, the, the European market must be just vast. I mean, it's a, such a huge space, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, already through the, the Hyperion business, we recruit extensively across Europe and the Nordics. Right. So and you're we, already, you've yeah, already we, got we a We have an office in Munich in, in Germany and a right. team in Germany as well. So the, uh, this is for the Hyperion business and we, we'll sort of replicate that for the fully charged business. Right. So from day one, we're able to sort of cover the whole of Europe and hopefully later in the year along with San Diego, we'll be able to launch in the US as well. Right. So will you be at the San Diego show? Is that... It's a good Obviously. reason to go, isn't it? It's a very good reason. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very impressive. No, it's really exciting. And I mean, I, and it's so good to hear that you, that we, you know, even that really the very modest, soft launch we did together has actually already had a response. I mean, that shows that there's, there's a lot of interest in before. That. There is just like a tidal wave of need. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know where to go, and a lot of businesses don't know where to go to, to get that kind of support. So, um, yeah solve a few of those problems yeah no well well done guys and i'm really excited to to hear how it goes and see you at uh, see you at fun well i was really impressed with what's going on with fully charged recruitment it just shows that there really is for one thing a demand from companies in this country to, to hire people to work for them and on the other hand there's a load of people who really want to work in that sector renewable energy clean tech it's, it's, it's a really a big growth sector if you're interested in any way with any of those topics have a look at the show notes all the links to everything we've talked about are in there but that's it as always if you have been thank you for watching